All right, so we're talking about the mixed media project, bonus project for MQG Bozeman. Um, you're going to be provided with a template that is a full egg and then an egg that is separated into little sections. These sections are going to fit exactly, but when you're actually doing your project, they are going to overlap and your egg is going to shrink slightly. So this template is going to be oversized. Here's an example that has the paper leather and fabric. And then on the back is just some cheap fleece or felt. And then here it is with the cork fabric and just general quilting fabric again with a batting in the center and then a just cheap fleece on the back. Kind of an Easter theme here. To create your Easter egg, you're going to start with your piece of batting and then starting with the bottom piece, in this case it's a quilting cotton, we're going to overlap with our mixed media fabric. The reason we want the mixed media to fit over the quilting cotton is the mixed media wool, uh, the cork, or the paper leather, they will not shred or fray. So they will um, hold down everything. You are going to see where it's going to because of the overlap. You're going to have excessive batting. That's okay. We're going to trim it off at the end. Um, but your next step is to take this to your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch to hold down your mixed media. You can use clips. Do not use pins as pins will make permanent holes, especially if you're working with the paper leather or the cork. All right, so I have now sewn my zigzag stitch over the mixed media fabrics. Uh, there is some slight warping to this project right now. Uh, this is wool, so fair warning, you can press it, but it may shrink. Make sure you're using the proper settings on your iron. If you're using the paper leather or the cork, um, you can use a regular cotton setting. However, always test off to the side first before working on your project. So I'm going to go ahead and press this and then afterwards I am going to trim around the edge to make it a nice clean edge. All right, so the top of my Easter egg is now complete and it is trimmed. It's been pressed so it lays beautifully flat. So now we are going to take our backing going to flip it over. Again, this is going to be oversized. And then set it on to, to make your sandwich. From here, I personally go ahead and trim it so that they're both equal size. However, you can wait till the end. I just find it's easier to do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once that's done, then you are going to take a decorative stitch and sew all the way around. Uh, satin stitch is typically required. Um, you can do a zigzag stitch, however, depending on your bottom layer, it could potentially fray, so there is that. Um, and if you are working with the paper leather, do be careful if you do go excessive with your satin stitch where you're not seeing any of the under fabric, there is a potential that you will cut the actual fabric. So giving a little bit of the underside showing is okay. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. All right, I have taken my Easter egg from the sewing machine and done a satin stitch all the way around. Um, a little less than a quarter inch width is what this is set at currently. Um, if you notice, it is pretty um, ruffled right now. I'm going to take it to the iron and press it, and it should flatten right out. So I'll be right back. And here we have it straight from the iron. It's all nice and flat. The back, um, I'm going to trim probably a couple of these little hairs that have kind of seeped their way through, but now 
I have my Easter eggs, this one in cork, this one in paper leather, and this one in the merino wool. And they're really that simple, and now they're perfect for a nice cup of coffee. And that's how you do it. If you have questions about this process, the stitch lengths, or any of that, uh, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much.